What's going on people? My name's Kyle and this is how I set up my A7C for shooting videos. So there are three different memory recall profiles that you can save in your A7C and I use all three of them for different situations. The first one is for stuff like this, talking head, YouTube stuff in a studio or in a controlled environment. The second one is just for general slow-mo, whether it's in a studio or outside running gun. And the third is for running gun vlogging that I do, and I call that one easy mode. Here are the timestamps if you want to just skip forward to each of those. But if not, let's get into my custom button layout. The first thing I do with every single one of my memory profiles is go into movie with shutter and turn that on. It's going to be in the second tab on the fourth page at the top. Next, moving on to the actual custom button layout. At the rear, we have the APS-C and Super 35 select button at the bottom. Custom button is white balance. Then we have touch operations select, zebra display select, ISO, and zoom. Then at the top, since we turned on movie with shutter, we can change that button and use it as a custom button. So I use that for focus area. And then on the lens, I usually use that button for autofocus, manual focus, but I don't actually really use that setting too much. Now we can move to the function menu. We have focus mode, peaking display, audio recording level, metering mode, autofocus transition speed, zebra level, autofocus tracking sensitivity, face eye priority and autofocus, grid lines, priority set and auto white balance, exposure compensation, and marker display. Now onto the actual memory profiles themselves. Like I said, the first one is like a studio kind of controlled environment thing. So I just kind of set my ideal settings in the camera and then adjust the room to match. So starting off with the main thing, I always set this profile into manual exposure mode, but there's a special way to do that for videos. You have to set your camera into movie mode at the top, and then you go into the settings, go into movie one, and then at the very top, you have to change your exposure mode to manual. My resolution and frame rate is 4K 24 frames at 100 megabits per second. I do this because at 24 frames, especially on this camera, you get no crop. In 30 frames, you get a very slight 1.2 crop, but at 24, it's the full sensor. So I like to get as much as I possibly can. I also like to follow the 180 shutter rule. So since we have a frame rate of 24, to get as close as possible to that, I set my shutter speed at 1 over 50. Like I said before, this is a controlled environment. So because of that, I always set my ISO to 100 just to start off with a clean image. If my lights don't get bright enough, then I can bring up the ISO, but I haven't had that happen yet. The aperture is up to you. I usually go with the lowest aperture I can possibly get. So right now I'm at 1.4, but it's up to you. White balance set to 5,500 Kelvin. I like the middle ground because I can make my lights a little bit warmer if I need to. You get to see the warmth of the lamp in the back still. Just kind of a balance. It's up to personal preference again. I have zebras on. I have the zebra setting is set to standard range 73 plus or minus two. And that's because of the picture profile I'm using, and I'll explain that later. My zoom setting is set to clear image zoom. This is, I, clear image zoom is like my favorite thing ever. So if I say a lot, sorry, but that's why. Autofocus mode, I always have it in wide so I can get the eye autofocus and face tracking and all that. And then obviously autofocus continuous because it's a continuous video. Subject shift sensitivity is at two. Since it's a talking head, I want to be the thing in focus pretty much all the time. So I want it to be pretty locked on. That's why I have it low. And then the transition speed is five because I'll be moving. And then some more miscellaneous stuff. I always have the APS-C slash Super 35 crop automatically off. Uh, and that's because, I mean, right now I'm using a Super 35 Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4. And with these bars, you can't see any of the vignetting that's happening out here. So, and even if you could, I could just clear image zoom in just a little bit and you would have no idea. So I always keep that one off just in case. If I need to crop in, I can always do it later on. My marker display is set to four by three. So that's how I know I have lines right here. So just to get a better idea of my framing. Steady shot on. Honestly, you can kind of turn this off. At least for me, I'm on a tripod, so nothing's moving. Steady shot's not doing anything. And then lastly, my audio recording level display is on. So my mic is right here. I can see the levels that are popping up as I speak. This is too loud. and. This is too quiet. And I can tell that as I'm recording. All right, now onto the second memory profile. As I said, this one's slow motion, very general use, um, super simple stuff. Just 1080p, 120 frames, nothing crazy. But the way I do it is in SQ mode. You set your camera into SQ mode, and I think it gives you the option for your output frame rate and then your recording frame rate. And then it just makes the file for you after you record. So I always set mine to 24 and then 120. And then, as I said before, I always follow the 180 shutter rule. So since our frame rate is at 120, 
my shutter speed is set to 250. You have to for a second. Manual exposure mode, your aperture is up to your preference. ISO is also up to your preference. I advise to keep it as low as you can. White balance, I usually leave on auto because it varies where I'm doing these slow motion shots. So leave it on auto. I turn my zebras on again, except for this time I have them set to a lower limit at 92. And again, I'll explain that when I get into the picture profile at the end of the video. Focus mode, continuous. Focus area, I usually have set to flexible, expandable spot. Expand flexible spot. Subject shift sensitivity is one because normally when I'm doing slow motion, I want it to lock onto one thing and not really move. And then the transition speed is set to seven because sometimes it's a lot of quick motion that's happening. Steady shot is on again. And then marker display, I set to 16 by nine for this one because when I do slow motion, I like to have the bars up here instead of over here. And last but not least, we have the third memory profile, the one I call easy mode. This is the one that I get into when I don't really wanna think about the settings. I just wanna go out there, point a camera at something and have the video look relatively nice. So we'll get into the settings that I use for this as well as the picture profile that I use for all three of these. But if you guys have found this video helpful so far, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. It really helps me out, but let's get to it. So to start with, I start in shutter priority mode instead of manual. Same thing, you set your camera into the video mode, go into the settings, second tab, at the very top, you just change exposure mode into shutter. My resolution and frame rate is 4K 30 this time because sometimes I like to slow down my footage to that 80% mark just to give a little bit more of a dreamy feel to the action that's happening around me. Since we're in shutter priority mode, we still have control over the shutter. And like I said again, 180 degree shutter rule, our frame rate's 30, so our shutter is gonna be set to one over 60. ISO auto, white balance auto, auto focus mode continuous, and wide focus area. And then here's a really important part of it. Your metering mode has to be set to highlight. And at the top of your camera, if you can change your exposure compensation, you set it to plus one. So pretty much what the highlight metering mode does is it tracks the exposure of your highlights. So if you have your camera set to exposure compensation of zero, it's gonna make sure that none of your highlights are clipping at all. But the reason I set it a little bit higher is because the threshold is a little bit higher for this picture profile. So if I were to have left it at zero, I'd be leaving a little bit of dynamic range just up at the top end. So moving that exposure dial up to plus one just lets me get that little bit up to the top and then I have the rest to work with in post. Zebra's on, same as the previous setting, we have lower limit set to 92. Now the reason for this is because I'm using a specific picture profile that works with the Leeming LUT, and the creator of the Leeming LUT says that 92 is the upper threshold for what's usable within this picture profile, so that's how I use it. Subject shift, subject shift, bleh. Subject shift sensitivity is set to four this time because sometimes there's a lot of action, the camera can switch back and forth between whatever it thinks is the most important in the frame. Transition speed set to five, and then same as the other ones, APS-C slash 35 millimeter crop off. And now finally for the picture profile. So like I said, I use Leeming LUTs to correct my footage, and this profile is based off of the recommendation from the creator of the Leeming LUTs, but I've changed a few things. So I have picture profile two, doesn't really matter which picture profile you set it to, but my custom settings are black level minus 10, gamma cine two, color mode still, everything else the same, and then you go down to color depth. I have red minus four, green plus five, blue plus four, cyan minus two, magenta minus three, and yellow minus three. And then if you go to detail, I have it set to minus three. So obviously all of that color depth stuff is custom, but even the black level and the detail I changed just a little bit. The recommended for those is a zero black level and a negative seven detail. But for the black level, when I went into editing, I didn't like how it was so flat. And even after I applied a contrast LUT, it still didn't give me the blacks that I wanted. So I just dropped it to negative 10 and it fixed that problem. And then for detail, everyone says to take the detail all the way down in these cameras because it's too digital and it's over sharpened. And I kind of agree and I kind of don't. Everyone says it's better to sharpen in post, but that's when they have professional editing softwares. I use a free version of DaVinci, so I'm literally just increasing the blur slider, but in the opposite way, so it sharpens it. And I don't think that's the best way to do it, so I'm just gonna let the camera do a lot of it. I took a little bit of the edge off, but I think the negative three setting is a good balance between where the cinematic people want it to be and where the complete novices want it to be. So there you have it. Those are all of my settings. You have all of my secrets, but I will say they're liable to change. Those color depth numbers have changed numerous times over the past three weeks. So 
Maybe I'll do an update later on if I have some significant changes to any of the other profiles, but for now, this is what I'm using every time I touch this camera. If you want to see some example videos using the settings that I just showed you, you can go up here, I think, and there's a playlist, or you could just click my channel and just take a look through all my videos. It is literally the settings that I use for all the videos that I make. But that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys staying till the end. If you found value in this, please leave a thumbs up. It helps me so much. If you didn't like it, make sure you hit the dislike twice. If there's settings you think I should change, leave them down in the comments. And if you want to see more videos from me, definitely hit subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.